Good morning boys and girls. It's good to have you all listen in to this lesson today. I hope you're all fine. Okay? So please sit up. I hope you have a pen, you have a paper, and you have the Bible with you. Great. Okay, so now let's pray as we start the lesson together. Our Father and our God, we come before your presence to give you thanks for this wonderful day, the day of the Lord. We want to thank you because you love us and you've given us life even in this day. How we pray, Lord, that you help us listen to your word, help us learn from it, and help us understand it. Help us also to apply it to our lives and take it seriously. So now, Lord, we pray, might you be pleased to lead us and to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, boys and girls. Now, from last week's lesson, we've been learning about the Savior. And we see a number of things happening there. How the Lord Jesus Christ is betrayed and ending up being crucified. So the Bible has got a number of stories for us to learn from. A number of things happen each day. A number of things have been told before. And so when they happen, sometimes we forget that they have been told to us. But today, boys and girls, I would want you to listen attentively yet again and try and see just how you relate to what has been told to us before. The Lord Jesus always promised to come again and take his people to the heavenly home. The earth has been there for a long, long time and people imagine it will be there for many more years to come. The world today has many, many problems. We have seen wars, we've seen food shortages, epidemics, diseases. We also have seen earthquakes and many, many other problems that we are facing today. All these are sin, and they are supposed to be threats to a long future history, to mankind. And yet, people still think the earth will continue for a very long time. I don't know how you think about this, boys and girls, but anyway, we need to think about what the Word of God tells us. The Lord, on the other hand, says the future will be different. Yes, he knows it, and he has said it, even in his word, and that this world is not going to be there for a long, long time. Okay? This world is not going to be there for a long, long time. There will be a time when this will come to an end, and that is not long from now. In the last lesson again, the Lord Jesus is seen to talk about how he will be rejected. He's also talked about how people he has come to help will actually deny him. And yet, the people he's talking to, they don't seem to see that. The Lord Jesus Christ was able to see what was going to come in the future. And because of that, he warned the people around him. He saw the troubles and he would talk about them. The disciples, on the other hand, were full of questions. They would ask, oh, Lord, tell us. Look at this. Look at this building. How beautiful it is. This building was done for years and so on. Every time, every point, every discussion, the Lord took it as a teaching point for his disciples and he would use such opportunities to explain just how the future will come out to play. When the disciples, for example, in Matthew 24 and verse 1 to 2, talked about the building of the temple, the Lord Jesus Christ shifted their interest and started talking about how it is that not long from that time, not even one of those stones of that building would stand. Okay? They are talking about the beautiful building, of the temple and how strong it looked and the Lord Jesus Christ used it to talk about the end of that temple. The disciples again ask for signs and they're talking about 
what should be expected at the time when the temple in Jerusalem would fall. The Lord Jesus Christ again brings in a lesson and he talks about the signs which would come before the end of the world. We'll see this in, we saw this in verse 3 of chapter 24. Okay, so now, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling people to look to the future. He explains about all the wars, the earthquakes, he explains about the epidemics to come. And so far, we have seen, even ourselves, we've heard of earthquakes. Not long ago, just a week or two, there was an earthquake in Turkey and Syria. The news is still talking about that. There have been wars in the world. There have been epidemics just some years. Two years ago, we were in the COVID epidemic. It was actually now a pandemic because it was larger than an epidemic. The Lord has been proved true this far. So, if Jesus has been proved accurate in all his predictions of the events which have taken place this far, boys and girls, should we not trust his words about events which are still in the future? Shouldn't we? Anyway, I think we should. Looking to the future, the Lord left us with the great parable we are about to look at. It is so beautifully said and we should all take it seriously and ask ourselves the big question. And the big question I pose before you boys and girls is, will you be ready for the Lord Jesus when he returns? Will you be ready for the Lord Jesus when he returns? Boys and girls, let us turn our Bibles to Matthew and chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. And I'll read from verse 1. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us, you and us. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. There ends our reading. Now, boys and girls, we see here a beautiful picture of a wedding, okay? Weddings are weddings everywhere. Everywhere you go in the world, weddings are weddings. They are joyful occasions. A number of people come together, relatives, friends, they all gather to witness the union of a man and a woman for life. The man and the woman are the bride and the groom. They come, relatives will come, and gifts will be brought, and so on and so forth. We also look forward to seeing the bridesmaids, okay? In the scriptures we've read just now, the bridesmaids are the virgins in the scriptures we've read. So they are bridesmaids, and the best men or groomsmen are also present at every wedding, and we look forward to seeing all these people. In some cultures, the weddings may take place at night. And as such, the brides 
maids and the groomsmen we will need to have lamps because what happens in those cultures the groom will have to walk in the evening or in the night to the bride's home and then they would be escorted back to his home so he goes to the bride's parents home to fetch his bride then they have to walk back to his home and the bride's maids and the groom's men are the ones who will have the lamps okay they will have the lamps maybe that's why in this uh, in the scripture we've read these uh, virgins the bridesmaids needed to have the lamps okay the bride on the other hand takes a long time to prepare for her wedding day and the people coming to help will be with her sitting by her side trying to put things together and make sure they plan for a beautiful day sometimes the bride waits for years sometimes for months and they would be in this preparing process to make sure everything works well this bride we look up we, we, we read about in the scripture had 10 bridesmaids 10 friends they had been with her all along preparing for her big day her wedding day they had the oil ready for the lamps and everything else their clothes were in order but maybe because they had waited for a long time they got tired and on the actual day when they needed to be ready what happened they fell asleep because maybe they were tired it's unbelievable how it is that when a shout came to say the bridegroom is coming they were able to wake up but then they found they had used up all their oil their lamps could not go on that is unbelievable boys and girls they clearly showed that they were not prepared for the coming of the bridegroom the bridegroom could have kept it secret he didn't want to tell them when to come because he wanted it to be a surprise for the bride but surely the bridesmaids should have been waiting but they didn't wait the other five on their other hand waited and they reserved their oil kept it safely and they were ready at the time they needed to be ready now you tell me boys and girls if you were the bride how would you react to find that five of your bridesmaids are not ready to escort you on the actual day of your wedding how would you react we see in the scriptures we read that the groom at the time he came he entered the banqueting hall of course he found his bride the bride had her five maids present the other five had gone to look for oil because their friends could not share the oil they didn't want to be found and prepared themselves so they reserved what they reserved for the most important time and that's the time of the wedding ceremony the ones who had gone out what happened when they came back the door had already been shut so the groom was with the bride and the maids who were ready for his coming the ones who were found outside were shut out when they cried and asked for the door to be opened they were told i do not know you that's what the groom said boys and girls this is very very serious you know the lord is coming back and that is for a fact despite our sin he loves us and he looks at those who have repented as his beloved bride he gave his life to save us and to restore us to this wonderful position that we have we are now called the beloved bride but if you do not know the lord jesus christ you are not one of those but boys and girls you need to do something you need to be wise you need to be ready you should not be found like the unwise virgins who were not ready for the coming of the groom the lord's coming may seem long in coming but he will surely come again 
let us not be foolish bridesmaids. They were foolish. They were not ready. They were not ready for the groom's coming. And we should learn from that. Who are we going to be? We cannot afford to be foolish like we see in verse 2 of chapter 25 in Matthew. Do not spend that which you have reserved for the future. You have been given life and this life has been given to you by the Lord himself. God created you. He created you for a purpose. Man sinned, but because God loves us so much, he has redeemed us back to himself by giving us the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes, he will come as the bridegroom. He's coming to fetch his beloved bride. And only those who are in the Lord Jesus Christ will be his bride his beloved bride. If you are not ready for the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be found outside, like the foolish virgins who were locked out outside. Be ready and prepare yourself. Do not depend on what people are saying. A lot of people outside there are telling the world there's, there's no eternal life, the Lord is not coming, but boys and girls, the word of God tells us he is coming. We must not be late in making our life-changing decision. Let us be wise. Now is our opportunity to give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ so that we are found as wise, wise virgins. We should be ready for his coming. His coming unexpectedly. No one knows the day. No one knows the time. Be on the alert then. For you do not know the day nor the hour. We find this in Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. Boys and girls, that is the end of our lesson. And I hope we will think about this. And I pray that the Lord himself will reach out to us so that we are found to be ready on the day that he comes. Bye.